Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to make a clipboard that I'm going to use in my studio. So I am just repurposing this old clipboard that I used in my teaching days. I gave it a good sand. I'm using the Bulldog clip to keep it open and I'm just applying a coat of, coat or two of white gesso. I'm going to put on a coat, let it dry, and add another coat, and I'm going to do this to the front and the back. Now these clipboards are made of MDF and they absorb the moisture, so you wanna make sure that you give it enough time to dry. So once that's done, I am moving on to some options to covering this clipboard, and napkins work perfectly. Well, you can pick a napkin like this with an all-over pattern. You're going to have to work around the clip, so you're gonna to have to do some cutting. Here's another option of a napkin. The, all the napkins that I'm showing you are from Ninny's Napkins. I love the navy on here, and I love the hydrangeas. If you don't wanna go with an all over pattern, you can go with a focal image and put that in part of the clipboard. If that's the case, I highly recommend rough cutting it out so that you can audition the piece and get a really good look and idea of what it might look with. This will give me lots of places to put texture and other patterns. This viola pattern is another focal image napkin. I've cut out, rough cut it so I can addition it. Right now that one by itself, too small on the clipboard, size does matter, but if I add this piece, it fills across the bottom. The top I can add texture and pattern and do all that mixed media goodness. I think I'm gonna use this hydrangea one. The scale of it seems to fit the clipboard and I absolutely love hydrangeas. So I'm peeling off the excess plies and I'm using my liner brush with a little bit of water to water cut the edges and remove as much of that white as possible. I love napkins for decoupaging that have white. The white goes clear and you will be able to see if there's a colored background or whatever. Now, because I don't wanna distort the color of the napkin focal image, I'm gonna glue it on first and then worry about the background. I'm putting a coat of fluid matte medium, putting down half of it using saran wrap to smooth it out without uh, causing any rips and then I'm doing the other side. Slow and steady wins the race for sure. Loving the bright beautifulness of this on the white background. Putting a coat of fluid matte medium on top to seal the napkin in case I want to add some color or something further down the creative process. So now I'm gonna work on the back and I decided I'm gonna use this all over pattern hydrangea one and put it on the back. This clipboard is going to hang in my studio and I'm planning on sticking post-it notes, my ideas for future videos, for projects. So it is my inspirational clipboard, but I want it to look nice when there are no post-it notes on it, and I wanna be able to use both surfaces. So again, I'm gluing down half of it, the top half, and then I'm going to glue down the bottom half and put a coat of the fluid matte medium on top to seal it. I had got a little rough. Some napkins are a little more tender, I guess. So I cut a piece and I'm just decoupaging it on. Now it looks a little darker there, but don't worry, we're gonna solve that problem. Once it's completely dry, you can use a sanding block to sand off the excess napkin. But make sure that it is completely, completely dry. Otherwise, it just might rip. So I'm just edging the clipboard. I don't want any of the regular clipboard color to show, so I'm just going to put some in this case, this is not black, it is a dark blue. The name will come to me. And I'm just going around getting rid of the white gessoed edge or the color of the clipboard.
loving the napkin pattern here. Now I want to add a little bit of something to this. So I grab this dragonfly stamp. I love dragonflies and I'm putting gold paint on my gel plate with a brayer and using it as a stamp pad and adding these gold dragonflies all over the napkin. I love how the gold looks on the navy and it just adds that shimmer and shine, a little bit of something extra when you really don't want to have something extra. I don't want to put texture on this side or other pattern. So this is a quick, easy way of decorating a clipboard. Pick your favorite napkin, away you go. I'm putting some of the dragonflies half off. Pressing really hard to get a good stamp. So you can see how using even your small stamps on larger projects, you can put them in the background. And now I'm putting gold around the edge and that gold stands out all the more because I put that dark blue underneath. Payne's Gray, that's the name of the blue. I told you I would figure it out. So this side is almost done, but I decide, you know, I need to add some gold splatter. This is just gold acrylic paint that I have thinned and I keep in a little container because I tend to do a lot of splatter so I don't have to mix it up every single time. And the splatter hides in that dark spot where I fixed the hole. You can't even see it anymore. Between the dragonfly stamp and the splatter, it's perfect. So that side's done. So let's work on this side. Now, I'm going to admit it right now, I struggled a bit with the background. I had an idea and, well, you're going to see. So I'm going to add some texture. This stencil is from the Crafters Workshop. It's called Layered Wallpaper, one of my favorites. It has a definite vintage feel to it. And I wanted a little bit of texture on here. It's just going to add interest, but I didn't want too much because like I said, my plan is to stick post-it notes with my ideas for projects or ideas for videos down the road. And if I had used modeling paste, that might give a little too much texture. So here I'm putting thick gesso through the stencil. It's going to add that texture. It's also going to take color medium a little bit differently and it's going to add some interest. So I put that in three places. Now I wanna do some stamping with some script and words. This is a word stamp from Stamperia, one of my favorites. And I'm stamping even over the napkin that I've decoupaged on and the, the uh, thick gesso. And of course, I did draw let everything dry in between. Once that's completely dry, I want to colorize the background. And I'm using unbleached titanium, which is the off-white, and white gesso. And I'm going right over top of all that stamping that I did. This is going to knock back the stamping a little bit and give me a nice base coat of color. Now, I could have left it white or very off-white. But it just looked, it didn't look like the background went with the decoupage napkin. Here I've got little white areas in between on the napkin and I'm just giving that a little bit of a wash of the unbleached titanium to make it not stand out. 
Now I'm adding a little bit of white in certain areas where I want to knock back the stamping that I did. I don't want to see it as much. I want to soften the edges and just have that peeking through. This is adding some lighter spots and some darker spots. Now here I decided I wanted to add a little bit of the colors from the hydrangeas into the background. So I put some blue or some purples and some pinks on and I'm rubbing it on the background and then I'm rubbing it off. That's giving a very light amount of color but I'm not exactly happy with what's going on. And so I'm putting on and taking off, putting on and taking off and doing, I don't know, They some people call this a dance, but I'm not sure what I was doing. It just wasn't quite working with what I wanted. And so you just keep going forward. And I guess that's the, the lesson here, adding more and more I'm liking parts of it and I'm not liking parts of it. I like how the texture is coming out. You can see where the, the high spots are, are showing. Then I grabbed my ink tense blocks and I was actually colorizing some of the napkins to make them stand out. And I thought, oh, well, you know, I'm gonna add a little bit of that color onto my background. And so that's what you see me doing here. And I'm adding the pink and I'm liking that. And I guess this is a case of, I just didn't know when to stop. And I just keep going and I'm adding some of this pink, which is the color of the hydrangea below. And then I'm adding purple, kind of a deep violet -y purple. And then the background becomes very colored and very dark. And as it, the background becomes darker, the focal image, the hydrangeas, are fading further and further into the background. They don't stand out as much. When they look so bright and light when the background was white, but now you just kind of lose them a little bit. So I'm still doing the dance. I'm, I'm in it to win it and I just keep going adding color taking off color trying to add color to the hydrangeas making them a little bit brighter make them stand out now that the background's darker and here I'm adding some purples to the hydrangea really trying to perk up those colors so that it stands out on the background I love this hydrangea napkin and I definitely will be using it on an art journal page, experimenting with a different background at another time. Now I'm adding some white to brighten this out and again, make that focal image stand out in some way. Just bringing out some of the highlights and that's working. You can see that the focal image, or hopefully you can see that the focal image is perking up. It's show, you know, it's showing a little bit more than what it was before. Now I'm adding white, trying to lighten some of that at the top a little bit, giving it a bit of a wash pat down with some white acrylic paint. And when everything's dry, I decide I'm gonna stamp those dragonflies in the gold on the exact same way that I did on the other side. Especially in the middle where there's no texture, I, I really didn't like that big open area. And I thought, okay, so if I add some pattern to that, maybe my eye won't be dragged to it so much. And 
I'm loving the addition of gold here. Still, I'm not sold on the background. I'm trying to convince myself it's okay. Then I decided I'm going to take this word stamp that says inspire and I'm going to stamp it with white. And I like the white stamping on here and I put some on the pay, off the pay off the clipboard and some on it all over because this is where I'm going to put my inspiration, my ideas. So I thought this was a good word and I putting it with white lightened the background a little bit. So I'm just putting the white acrylic paint on with a makeup sponge and then stamping. Some are more opaque, some you can read easier. I just want variation. There are pictures of it with the post-it notes and the finished product at the end of the video. So be sure to check those out. So with the addition of the white words, I was a little bit happier about the end result. And instead of splattering with gold, I wanted to splatter with white. I, because again, I thought if I splattered with white, it was going to lighten the background a little bit. So I'm thinking I am done here, adding a little bit more white. And then I edge it with black. That's making it stand out. That black ties in with the dark purple that's there. And it just, I think, finishes the clipboard in this case. And then I decide to add some black script stamp. See what I mean about sometimes you don't know when to say when. Some of the areas that got a little dark, I took a baby wipe and just dabbed at it and it lightened it up. Took a little bit of the black off so it was more grayish and wasn't as in your face. But overall, I was happy with the addition of the script. When everything isn't quite working the way you want it to, you just kind of go through your list of, okay, can I add white? Can I add dark? Can I highlight? Can I shade? You're problem solving. And there you can see me dabbing at it just to lift up some of it in case it's splotched. So now my plan is to give it two coats of polycrylic satin finish. Here's the backside with the satin finish. I didn't varnish the front. I wasn't 100% convinced that I was done. And then I thought, let me put a word on. I have these metal words from the Dollar Tree and I'm just using this as a tracer. And I'm going to use my white Stabilo L pencil and trace the word out and have the word joy on there. This is going to, because I'm going to plan on using white, lighten the whole thing, push the background more into the background. Now there's texture there, so that's a little hard to, to write on. And I'm just making sure that I have enough of the Stabilo on there to be able to see it when I go and paint out the letters. So I'm using the Fluid, Liquitex Fluid Acrylics which I like the, the consistency, the, I have the white and black and colors, but it does have a bit of a smell, a perfumey smell that I am not fond of. So 
So I'm just painting out the word joy. And I do give this a couple coats to get the level of opaqueness that I want. So while I'm doing this, I'm thinking to myself, am I going to outline this in black with the Posca pen? Or am I going to do outline it with gold, a glaze pen? What am I going to do? It needs something to it. So I end up shading it with deep violet and a mixture of black using my angle brush, using my shading technique. And then I didn't catch that on camera because again, I was being, I was, you know, it wasn't working quite right. And, and it would took oh, quite a while for me to get it to the point where right now I actually do love it. So there is the completed clipboard and there's the backside. And there it is with some post-it notes. And there's the backside with post-it notes. So it's going to, and there it is hanging in my studio right behind my workspace. So I can just grab the clipboard right on the post-it notes and put my ideas so I can remember what I want to do. Thanks for watching.